this is Amos. Show sure is a beautiful night, ain't it? I remember a moon just like that years ago back in Marietta, Georgia. Yes, it was the night that my old friend, the Kingfish, brought Sapphire Smith home from the charity ball just 20 years ago. Oh, it was such a wonderful dance, wasn't it, Georgie? And I could dance with you until the cows come home. You light as a fella. George, wasn't it wonderful the way they played our song? Let me call you sweetheart. Yeah. Honey, let me call you sweetheart forever. George, do you mean that? I never meant nothing more in my life. Oh, George. And so they was married in Reverend Johnson's little chapel in Marietta. Well, a lot of moons has come and gone since then. And once again tonight, the kingfish and sapphire are coming home from a dance. Of all the loons ever I dragged across a dance floor, you is the worst. Oh, is that so? Well, it seems to me, I remember you used to say you could dance with me when the cows come home. Yeah, the way you was clomping across that floor tonight, I thought they had. And I was dancing with one of them. Joy Stevens, I've heard just about enough out of you. Don't you dare criticize me. Look at yourself. And just what's wrong with me? What kind of a husband has you been? You ain't got no romance. You ain't lazy. You ain't shiftless. You ain't got no ambition, and you ain't got the backbone of a jellyfish. But now, honey... And them is your good point. <laughs> I had to infer from your conversation that you were sorry that you married me. Sorry? I regret the day I ever walked down the aisle with you. You regret it? Every time I pass Reverend Johnson, New Parish on 124th Street, I break out in goose pimples. How could that sweet old man do this to me? Let me tell you something, George Stevens. If I had it all to do over again, I wouldn't marry you if you was the last man on the face of the earth. Woman, if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to make you eat them words. Yes, make you eat them words. I tell you, Andy, if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to make that woman eat them words. Yeah, you ought to teach that woman a lesson, all right. Yeah, if that old gal wasn't married to me right now, she'd be down on her hands and knees begging me to marry her. People ought to watch what they say. They ought to be kind to one another. Yeah. Uh, the mail didn't come, Mr. Simpson. Thank you, Lightning. A uh, lovely day, Mr. Brown. Oh, shut your big mouth and mind your own business. <laughs> Anything important? Ooh, uh... Just a letter, yeah, from Marietta, Georgia. Yeah, what's he writing you about? Well, there's a tax bill on some property that me and Sapphire own. They send us one every once in a while. I just throw them, uh... Andy, me and Sapphire was married in Marietta. Hmm. Kingfish, I can tell from that expression on your face that you didn't either thunk or something got indigestion. Andy, <laughs> bring the typewriter in from the other office. Kingfish, what are you up to? Andy, you heard me talking about making Sapphire eat them words. Well, the mystery chef is about to be tired of meal. So therefore, it's our duty to inform you that owing to this unfortunate error, that in the eyes of the law, there's no legal marriage exists between George Stevens and Sapphire Smith. Yours very truly, Fred Thompson, Deputy County Clerk, Marietta, Georgia. There we is. Fred. Thompson. But, Kingfish, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Why, certainly, son. They done this in a book once by Somerset Monaghan. <laughs> <laughs> now all I gotta do is plant this someplace where it won't be too obvious. Oh, 
George must have left the suit to be cleaned. Therefore, it is our duty to inform you that in the eyes of the law, no legal marriage exists between George Stevens and Sapphire Smith. Good heaven! Hello? Hello? Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Stevens, but the Gainsbridge ain't here. Uh, no, I don't know exactly where he is. Well, you'll see that, folks. I'm going to get home. She sounded excited, Gingrich. What you gonna do? I gonna duck her all day. I gonna make her suffer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I gonna play with that old girl like a cat with a mouse. Therefore, it is our duty to inform you, due to this unfortunate error, in the eyes of the law, no legal marriage exists between George Stevens and Sapphire Smith. Well, honey, by some strange coincidence, look like your wish done come true. What you talking about, George? Well, you know, the other night you said you wish you had never married me. Now, here's your chance to be free right now. We ain't married no more, so let's call it a day, Miss Smith. Call it a day? That's right. What you talking about? You go your way, and I'll go mine. Good luck to you and all that stuff. Be seeing you again sometime. It's been nice knowing you for 20 years. You, you mean we ain't married no more? Good, and that's the way it's going to stay. Uh, excuse me, honey, but did I understand you there? You mean you ain't going to beg me to marry you again? Exactly, George. But honey, we could go to Reverend Johnson's on 124th Street. Honey, you're making a big mistake. Uh, uh, you're my wife. I'm your husband, George. Pardon me. I didn't get the name. <laughs> Wait a minute, Papa. Don't be foolish. I'm your husband. Husband? Why, I ain't had a husband in 20 years. Oh, me. Look, Papa, we both are tired. Let's forget the whole thing till morning. All right, George. I guess we do need some sleep. Yeah, we sure do. Let's go to bed. Here's your hat, and there's the door. The door? Yes, I is a respectable unmarried woman, and you is a very late visitor, so get out. Get out and stay out. <laughs> Good I tell you, boys, I gotta do something. This is a terrible situation. My wife done throwed me out the house. Well, you never should have ripped that fool out in the first place. Uh, listen, Kingfish, I don't think Sapphire is serious about not wanting to be married to you. Maybe she's just uh, trying to get even or something. Why don't you call up and explain the whole thing to her? Yeah, I'll call the old gal up and give her a chance to apologize. Yeah, give her a break. Hello? Who is this? Uh-oh, the Sapphire's mama. I'd like to speak to Sapphire. Miss Smith is not at home. I called you here, boys, because I have done come to a decision. This thing about Sapphire has gone far enough. I'm going to do something drastic. Well, what you going to do, Kingfish? I'm going to bring her to her senses. 
I is going to be seen in the company of another woman. <laughs> you got to do something drastic, that's all. Mama, I can't go on acting like I ain't married. Now listen, Sapphire. We done checked and we found out that this letter from George is a fake. Now we got to show him that two can play this game. But Mama, na na na, daughter, we got to fix it so he come crawling back on his hands and knees and never pull a trick like this again. Well, just how you gonna do that, Mama? It ain't worked so far. <laughs> Daughter, I happen to have an ace up my sleeve. You is going to be seen in the company of another man. <laughs> Theodora Wilson, tall girl, has own car, light eater. Mm, no, and yeah. that don't sound quite right, ain't you? Got nothing better? Well, let's see here. No, this gal's married. <laughs> this one left town. <laughs> Here we is. Here is the number, and there is the phone. <laughs> All right, Mama. I tell you, Sapphire, it is the only way we can bring that weasel to his senses. <laughs> Uh, I is, uh, Mr. Stevens. Oh, well, I'm all set. Is something wrong? Oh, no, no, uh, but the last time I was out with a girl was uh, to a suffragette picnic. And this is quite a switch from them mini blouses. Where are we going? Well, uh, I'd like to go someplace we could be seen together so the gossip would get back to my wife. And I understand the silver slipper is the place. <laughs> I, uh, uh... How do you do? I'm Mr. Royal from the escort service. Is there something wrong? Wrong? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Won't you come in? Thank you. How do you do? How do you do? Mama, this is Mr. Royal. Mr. Royal, this is my mother. My. I would have sworn you were sisters. <laughs> well, look along, children, and have a nice evening. Thank you. go somewhere where we could be seen together. I understand, and I think I know just the place. The Silver Slipper Cafe.
nice place, isn't it? is ridiculous, isn't it? Ridiculous? Yes. That old fool there with that young girl. Isn't it ridiculous the extreme some women will go to to get a man? Huh? That old lady sitting over there with that young man. <laughs> well, the old fool in the rear booth. That old lady in the second booth. My husband. <laughs> Holy mackerel. That old lady, my wife. Sapphire. 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 Yes, ma'am. Uh, Sapphire. Sapphire. Don't you talk to me, you old wolf. Got it back and round with that young hussy. Well, what would you do now with that young punk? George Stevens, if you can go out with a woman, I can go out with a man. Now, wait a minute, honey. George Stevens, I done put up with everything from you, but this is the end. And as far as I'm concerned, this is the end, too. I never want to see you again as long as I live. I never want to see that woman again as long as I live. Now, now, wait a minute here, Kingfish. Oh, why don't you let me go to Sapphire and explain what you was doing with that woman in the nightclub? Yeah, after all, you is innocent. Certainly I is innocent. I is innocent, but she was out with that young fella. Is that innocent? Well, maybe Sapphire is just a friendly type. And listen, there must have been some reason Sapphire was out with that fella. Or maybe he's a relative or something. Uh, let me go up and have a talk with Sapphire and see if I can't straighten this mess out. Nothing doing, Amos. If you go to that woman and speak to her, you is off of my list for life. It's all over. She's breaking up housekeeping, and she gives me the three o'clock tomorrow afternoon to get my stuff out. This is the best thing that ever happened to me. Should have happened years ago. <laughs> you no more. Honey, you never had that off before. And anyway, I don't want it. Take it or I'll throw it away. Now get a move on. If it's for me, I don't want to talk to nobody. How do you do, Sapphire? Yes, yes, what is it? Why, Sapphire, I don't think you recognize me. I'm Reverend Johnson. Oh, my goodness. Of course. Reverend Johnson, do come in. George, look who's here. It's Reverend Johnson. Good afternoon, George. Oh, well, uh, hello, Reverend Johnson. Uh, how is you, sir? I'm terribly sorry I didn't recognize you, Reverend Johnson, and I should. After all, I should recognize the man who married us. Well, I can't say that I blame you for not recognizing me, Sapphire. We haven't run into each other for quite a few Sundays now, have we? Oh, well, uh, you see, uh, we've been away. Uh, uh, we've been out of town. Uh, that, uh... No, sir. I guess we haven't. Well, it looks like you folks are doing a little house cleaning. Oh, yes, yes, we were. Uh, weren't we, George? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Reverend Johnson, won't you have a seat? No, no. I was just in the neighborhood and thought I'd drop by for a few seconds. You know, it makes my heart feel good to see a man and his wife working together. 
Oft times in life, our duties keep us away from each other most of the day. But it's nice to find a husband and wife who still find time enough to help each other with the chores. Can I get you a cup of tea or something, Reverend? No, no, Sapphire. I just dropped in to say hello. And I'm glad to see you both together. Well, I guess I'll be going now. Uh, glad you dropped by, uh, Reverend Johnson. Goodbye. Goodbye, Reverend. Seeing you standing there facing me now, side by side, brings back memories of years ago. Years ago when I officiated at your wedding. Why, Sapphire, where's your wedding ring? My wedding ring? Well, I, uh, uh... Oh, uh, I got that right here. Uh, I'm gonna have it cleaned, you know, uh, a little dusty after 20 years, you know. I remember your wedding ceremony especially. Because you two were so very happy. I don't think I ever saw the little chapel so beautifully decorated. Everything was so perfect. The flowers. The little choir. I can almost hear them now. Why, it seems like only yesterday when I said, we are gathered together to unite this man and woman in marriage, which is an institution ordained of nature, part of the very laws of our being, and instituted for the happiness and welfare of mankind. Yes, sir. And that's been many years ago. Then I think I remember saying that marriage was not made for happiness alone, but for the discipline and development of character, for mutual understanding and unselfish devotion. Sometimes we forget that, I guess. It was a beautiful ceremony. I remember the expression on your face, George, when I said, Do you take this woman, Sapphire, to be your lawful wedded wife? To honor her, comfort her, and keep her in sickness and in health, for better or for worse, from this day forth, as long as ye both shall live? I do. And you, Sapphire, do you take this man, George, to be your lawful wedded husband? To comfort him, honor him, and keep him in sickness and in health, or better, for worse, from this day forth, so long as ye both shall live? I do. Then, George, you said, With this ring, I be with. Then I think we came to the most beautiful part of all. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the state, in the name of our Father in heaven, I pronounce you husband and wife, whom love has joined together, let no man put asunder. Well, as I said, I have to be running along. I hope to see you both at church Sunday. Yes. Reverend Johnson, we'll be there. Yes, we'll be there, together. Oh, afternoon, Reverend Johnson. Well, well, Amos, how are you? And how are Ruby and the children? Oh, fine, just fine, thank you. That's fine. By the way, I was in your neighborhood today. I dropped by to see Sapphire and George. Oh, and how you see? Oh, they're just fine. They seem quite happy, I'm sure. Well, oh, that's nice. And Amos, I want to thank you for suggestions I stop in on Sapphire and George. It was nice of you to let me know they'd be home at 3 o'clock. <laughs> 